Hello friends, we are not employed by a FANG company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do product of an array except self lead code problem. If we see some of the companies where I want to get a job who have already asked this question, there are companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Apple, Uber, Bloomberg, Lyft, Google, Goldman Sachs, IBM, Twitter, TikTok and LinkedIn. So that's why I am paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code medium problem and also very well like problems on lead code. Uh, basically, we are given an integer array called nums and we need to return a new array called answer array such that every single value of that particular index position inside this answer array is actually equal to the product of all the other values that are present inside this given nums array except that particular ith element. So suppose we are given an input array that looks like this. In this case, we will have to create an answer array for the answer and that would be of the same size of whatever this input array we are given. Now in this answer array, suppose we want to enter the value at this uh, second position or uh, corresponding to the second index value. What we are going to do is we are actually going to take the product of this value number 1, 3 and 4 and whatever the product of these three values are, we will actually put it as the answer for this value. Same thing we are going to do for this uh, next value where we are going to take products of these two elements and this element but we won't take the product of this element from this original given input array and whatever the answer is we will actually put it over here inside the answer array uh, in order to enter this first element we will actually have to do the product of these three values so in the product of these three values is going to be 24 uh, now for the second element we will have to do the product of this first element and this last two elements so that is going to be 12 uh, for this third and fourth element we will uh, again repeat the same process and we will get subsequent values like 8 and 6 by doing the corresponding products and at the end we will have to return this as the answer array and uh, basically this is what the problem is asking us to do uh, even the name is also self-explanatory that we need to return the product of an array except self but we are given a very specific declaration over here that we need to use it in big O of n time without using the division operator and why it is asking us to use uh, solve this problem without using division operator because if we were allowed to use division operator suppose we are given an input we can just do the product of all of these value and we will get an answer called 24 and then all we have to do is for this answer array we will take this value 24 and then we will iterate over this input array and start dividing it with this 24 so even in the answer we will get if we divide 24 by 1 we will get the value as 24 if we divide 24 by 2 we will get value 12 if we divide 24 by 3 we will get value 8 so so on and so forth so it would become very easy for us to solve this problem so that is why they are explicitly asking us that we should not be using the division operator now the most basic brute force way to solve this problem is actually we take any single value and then we iterate over all the remaining values and do its product and put it in the answer array so we will create an answer array that looks like this we will first take this value so we will iterate over this given nums array and for all these three values we will do its product and we will get the value as 24 now again we will repeat the same process but this time we will be iterating over the second element so because we are iterating over the second element we will take this first value and we will take these two values and we will do that sum so we will get value number 12 and again we will repeat the same process so essentially this is bound to give us the correct answer and we would get it in this case but thing is this is this would not be the correct way why because if we see the time complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of n square why n square because we will have to iterate over this array for every single character we will have to iterate once and even for any particular character we will have to iterate over all of the other values again just to find their product number and that takes n square time and and we are explicitly told that we will have to solve this problem in big O of n time. So let's see that what would be the way to achieve that. Okay, so now for the better approach, we will actually have to put down one intuition to use. And the intuition is, suppose this is the element we want to get the product for in the answer array. So the idea is that we are actually going to take the product value of first two elements and we will take the product of this uh, last element. Again, if we take this portion, this value number 2, we will take the product of all the elements that are present on the left of this value number 2 and we will take the product of all the elements that are present on the right of this product number, uh, this value number 2. So that is the idea that for every single location, we will have to take product of all the values that are behind or pre to that particular level. So we can call it as prefix and all the values that come after that value and we can call it postfix. So now the idea becomes quite simple. What we are going to do is we are going to have two uh, arrays called prefix and postfix and we are going to iterate over this nums array once 
and for every single position we are actually going to keep track of all the values that come before it and after it and we are going to put down their error uh, values uh, like their product values and at the end we will just do a multiplication between this pre and post arrays and then we will uh, we should get our answer so let's see that in action and also one more thing that because for this particular element that are at the edges uh, so for this value number four there is nothing on the right side so like we can't do anything but uh, for the simplicity purposes we will consider that anything on the right side is actually one because anything multiplied by one remains the same and same thing we are going to do for this left edge as well that because for this value number one there is nothing in the prefix so again by default we will treat this as value number one as well so that will help us in uh, doing some counting right so let's see that in action so first of all for this value number one uh, we, we are calculating the prefix values so this one actually has nothing on the left but it only has one so we'll do one times one and we'll get the answer as one now for this value number two actually all we need to do is whatever the left element is we we just need to do the product of all of them so the left element in this case is only one and we will just put it over here as well now in this case the uh, value number three we will have to do product of all these elements so one way to do it is to do this like one times two so do the product of all these these two elements but that is actually time consuming one better way to do it is that uh, if we take this particular element value number two this already contains the product of all the values that are be present before that so why are we doing the effort of doing the product of this value number one and two that is just costing us additional resources the better approach is that we for this value number three uh, we are over at this position all we have to do is we just take whatever the value we have stored over here which is the prefix of all the values before this value number two multiply by whatever this value is present and that would be the prefix sum for this value number three so what we are going to do in this case is we will take this value number two so we will take this value number two and we will take this value number one from here from the prefix array that we have already calculated and we will do two times one in this case we will get value as two so we will add two over here and again for this value number four again we are going to repeat the same process so now this time we are going to take the value before four that is three so we will take three and we will multiply it by whatever value we have already found in this prefix array which is two so three times two is actually going to be six and so now we are done with this prefix array again we are going to repeat the same thing for the pro postfix array so this is the edge value so we can simply do four times one so we'll add the value four directly over here now this is value number three for this value number three all we'll have to do is just take product of this value so this is already four so we will again add four over here now uh, for this value number two all we have to do is we'll take the value this uh, whatever value that is present over here three multiply by whatever value we have already calculated in the postfix over here which is 12 so we will have a value called 12 over here for this uh, element number two and now again for this element number one we are going to repeat the same process so we will take this two and multiply it by whatever value we have calculated inside our postfix array and this is going to be two times 12 okay now we are done with both of our arrays now the task is actually quite simple now we will create our answer array and we are going to simply do the multiplication of every single one of these values so this becomes 24 times 1 24 this becomes 12 this becomes 8 and this becomes oh i made a mistake over here this has to be 1 not 4 because we are actually doing uh, the multiplication of all the elements that are present uh, on the right side of this value so this would become 6 and this is the solution that we are we, we are going to do uh, this solution actually works perfectly fine there are no issues with that if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big O of uh, 3 times n why 3 times n because we will have to iterate over this n to first of all create this prefix array then we get, we have to iterate over n times to create this postfix array and then again we will have to iterate over both of them to create this answer array so we are doing like 3 times n work but in general we can write this as big O of n and in terms of space complexity uh, we are actually creating couple of arrays so we also have to do big of n as space complexity so the idea is can we do something better and the answer is yes there is one way to actually do this both prefix and postfix array in a single array and that too inside the answer array that we are planning to create Okay, so let's keep the same example and we want to find the optimal solution for this one. Well, the idea is that rather than doing two separate prefix and postfix arrays, we are actually going to create an answer array 
and we are going to add all the values and now we are going to do prefix and postfix multiplication inside the same answer array and let me quickly show you how uh, first of all we are going to use couple of variables called prefix and postfix so let me uh, add their values and by default they are going to have value as one now what we are going to do is uh, first of all we are going to iterate over this given input uh, nums and we are going to calculate the prefix for every single element inside this answer array and we are also going to update the value inside this pre function uh, or pre variable and then again we will uh, iterate in the reverse order and we will keep on updating the postfix values inside the answer and by the time we are done uh, our answer array should have been completely filled out let me quickly show you that in the action so first of all uh, for this value number one uh, this is actually the prefix of uh, every every value that is present behind this one and uh, the multiplication of all of those values so because there is nothing over here we can consider this to be one by default so i'll not write it over here i'll just write over here that uh, for this first element inside this answer array uh, the nums actually does not have anything on the left side side left side so we can consider this to be one now we are going to uh, we are at this po second position for the second position what we are going to do is we are going to take the multiplication of whatever the value we have on the left side right so even on the left side we only have value one and even the prefix value is also one so far uh, by default so we are going to add one over here again now we are at this value number two or uh, three so for this value number three what we are going to do is we are actually going to take the the value that is before that which is two and we are going to multiply it with whatever the pre variable we have so we were also doing the same thing for this value number two as well but because both the values are one we were not getting any other result but in this case we will actually get a result of two and because we are getting a result of two the result of pre is also updated also being updated to value number two um, because it will help us to know further down for the next elements that what is the value of prefix now we are at this value number four so again we are going to repeat the same process we will take this value number three and we will take whatever the value of this prefix we have which is two so three times two uh, the value six so we will add value six over here okay and now we are done filling up this prefix portion and we have taken the prefix of every single element inside this answer array now we are going to do the reverse order now inside the reverse order again for this value number four actually uh, there is nothing on the right side of this value number four which means there is nothing on the postfix so we can consider it as one now because this is already one what we are going to do is whatever value we have calculated so far we are going to multiply it so if we multiply six by one the answer we get is six okay so so far uh, for this value number four the answer is six now we are at this value number three for this value number three what we are going to do is we will have to calculate everything on the post pick side so this value is four so we are take, going to take value four multiply by whatever value of this post fix variable we have which is one so four times one becomes one so now we have the value as four for this post fix so we are going to update the value of the post fix to be four and we are also going to uh, multiply this four with whatever the value we already calculated for this value number three which is two so four times two is going to be eight and this is going to be answer for this value number three that or uh, this is the product of all the numbers for this value number three except itself now we are at this value number two for value number two we are going to take value number three multiplied by whatever the post variable we have post variable is actually four so three times four is actually twelve so we are going to update that value over here first of all so now we have the value 12 over here and we will have to take this 12 and multiply it with whatever value we have already stored over here which is 1 so 1 times 12 is also 12 and now again we are at this last position so again for the last position we are going to repeat the same process we will take whatever the value that is after this value number one which is two so we'll take this two we will multiply it with whatever value we have stored inside this post variable which is again 12 so two times 12 and we this becomes actually 24 so we will do 24 and we will take 24 multiply by whatever value we have already stored inside this answer array which is 1 so 24 times 1 becomes 24 and this is the answer and if you look closely this actually becomes the complete answer that we are looking for and we have actually done everything in place without using any additional data structure or any additional array and we don't have to use basically any extra space so 
this is the best way to approach this problem and this is the solution that any interviewer would want to see if we see the time complexity in this case the time complexity is actually going to be big o of 2n why 2n because first of all we are iterating over from uh, left to right calculating this pre variable and then we are iterating on the reverse order calculating this post variable and updating the values but still which is good if we see the space complexity in this case Oh, well space complexity is actually constant because we are not using any additional space for this answer array we are given inside this uh, qu question statement that we have to create a new array so that we are anyways going to create but apart from that we are only using couple of variables to store some data and uh, that's why this is a very good approach now let's move on to coding so well, we are going to create a new array called result and by default we are going to set all the values as one we are going to initialize the two variable called prefix and postfix and we are going to assign the value as one for both of them okay now we are going to run our first for loop to iterate from left to right and we are going to update the value of prefix inside our answer uh, array so first of all we are going to update the value inside our result array and then we are going to update the value of our prefix variable so after this loop ends basically we should have uh, prefix values filled out for every single position inside our result array now we are going to run another loop and we are going to come in the reverse order and first of all we are going to update the value inside the result array so any single value inside the result is actually going to be multiplication of whatever the value we already had multiply by postfix variable we also have to update the value of postfix variable we are good to go Oh, actually I made a mistake this should be pre only not prefix okay and after this second loop ends essentially our result error should have been populated so we can simply return that let's try to run this code okay seems like our solution is working as expected let's submit this code and our code runs pretty efficiently compared to a lot of other solutions so that's why this is really good approach i would be posting the solution in the comments so you can check it out from there thank you